It feels like Fox are pitching this latest X-Men film as the one to put the franchise back on track. Which is odd when you take into consideration how much of a good film First Class is. Nevertheless, this is the X-Men film that promises not only to combine the two stellar casts, but right the wrongs of the lesser films in the franchise. And although it doesn't close all the plot holes of the series, it is mostly successful in its undertakings. Based on the comic of the same name and taking some of the key elements from it, X-Men Days of Future Past definitely feels like a Brian Singer X-Men movie, for better or worse. And not just because of the inexplicable lack of comic book style suits. Set in the not so distant future, this film sees what remains of the X-Men pitted against the Sentinels. Highly advanced and adaptive mutant killing machines who are responsible for giving us the most Terminator style future since... The Terminator films, I guess. Not Salvation. That one's terrible. So in order to set things right, Wolverine's mind is flung back to his 1970s body to stop the key event that triggers this whole mess. And you'll be happy to know that all your favourites are here. Well, most of them. Well, really, some of them. And even some of those are blink and you miss it cameos. That's something I'm sure a lot of people will take issue with, but considering the amount of big names on display here, it's a fairly well-balanced film. And not as Wolverine-centric as I expected. Days of Future Past is front-loaded with incredible action sets pieces, both in the past and future. Surprisingly, Quicksilver's one being a real high point. Yes, he still looks ridiculous, but he manages to bring something unique to the table and makes me question if Marvel's own version is capable of topping what's now being done here. Unfortunately though, what is set up at the beginning of the film doesn't entirely pay off at the end. And by that I mean most of the good action does happen at the start and the 1973 showdown is obviously trying to pack an emotional punch, but it just doesn't quite get there. Bolivar Trask also, the creator of the Sentinels, is given very muddled motivations and hardly comes across as a worthy foe to the X-Men. Plus he has his whole fate sealed with a brief shot of a newspaper clipping at the end of the film. It's really bizarre and hardly the finale fitting for a man who's apparently caused so much grief. So I guess at the end of the day, X-Men Days of Future Past gets a worst movie ever. Because there can only be one best movie ever and this just isn't it. So I guess the hunt continues? Fingers crossed for... uh... Mrs. Brown's Boy's The Movie. But seriously, this movie is absolutely fine. It's definitely on the better end of the X-Men movie scale, but for me, it doesn't top first class as far as engaging storytelling goes. But if you love action, and time travel, and goggles, and terrifying robots from the future, and significantly less terrifying robots from the past, and bits where Wolverine says something wry, and in your head you say to yourself, classic Wolverine, then there are worse ways to spend two hours of your life. And that worst way is 2009's Terminator Salvation. Or just play the video game based on it, which is much longer and much worse. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. Now this week's episode of the Weekly Planet Podcast continues our discussion on the best and worst X-Men films that we started last week. As well as a look at Godzilla 2014. But if you're watching this after Days of Future Past's worldwide release, then that following episode will be on that movie. But in much more depth and spoilery, plus we'll look at the future of the series. But with X-Men First Class being my favorite, I'd love to know what your favorite X-Men movie is. Is it this one? Have you seen it? I have. It's pretty good. Leave your thoughts below or via my Twitter and Facebook pages, both ending in Mr. Sunday Movies, if you have anything to say about that. Thanks, everyone. Take care.